Now let's start looking at um, Japanese architecture. Um, there's, there are a lot of connections between Japanese architecture and the Chinese architecture. And Japanese architecture in general, especially Buddhist architecture, um, was heavily influenced by Chinese architecture. Uh, <clears throat> but I will highlight the um, unique Japanese features, especially that uniqueness came from the Shinto, Shinto, Shinto root of, Chinese, uh, of, China, uh, of Japanese, um, Japanese culture. So before the introduction of Buddhism from China via Korea, Japan had its own religion known as the Shinto. Shinto <clears throat> as a religion came from the kind of natural environment of the Japanese Isles. So Japan, um, like the Great Britain, is an island country on the eastern end of the um, Euroasian continent. There, the land was um, narrow, mountainous, forested, a lot of um, volcanoes, a lot of earthquake, and uh, arable land was very precious, <clears throat> confined within those um, river valleys, um, flatland um, among uh, mountains. The heartland of Japanese uh, civilization is in the southern part, you know, this area, especially um, the, the Kyoto area known as the, the Kansai uh, Plain. There's a, a um, large, relatively large flatland um, on the coast near today's Kyoto. And the climate is mild not very harsh, not very uh, cold in the winter. So it's, it's different from the nor northern part of Japan, like Hokkaido, which was added to the Japanese territory only in the 19th century, which is cold. But uh, um, the heartland of Japanese civilization was, was mild. A lot of natural disaster um, that inspire awe and, and uh, worship to those mighty natural forces. So there is a flourish of nature worshiping and Shinto came from that kind of shamanistic tradition from that um, animistic um, worship, uh, animism, basically the belief everything has life. You know, those tree has life, great boulder has life, uh, the mountain has spirit, Great river had spirit too. So that's called animism. Shinto as a religion is basically um, a animistic religion that, um, that worship those natural spirit. And um, historical period in Japan started relatively late. Um, that was, you know, um, from about fifth century CE. And um, the introduction of new technology um, to the Japanese Isles from the continent was significant for kind of jump-starting Japanese civilization. For example, around 300 BCE, bronze was introduced to Japan as well as rice farming, and the horse riding, those all kind of suddenly appear, introduced to Japan and uh, jump-started the civilization um, in some way. So there is some kind of a jump. It's not kind of naturally evolving from a Neolithic technology to the new Bronze Age and the Iron Age. So all those so just suddenly became available and whoever controlled those new technology became elite and became kings and became rulers. So um, that is also um, quite different from, say, you know, Chinese history that 
evolved from Neolithic technology gradually to, um, to the Bronze Age and Iron Age. Um, Shintoism, I mentioned the animism, belief in natural spirit and uh, the build um, structure to honor those spirit, to mark out those sacred site. Um, they use the archway called a toli. These kind of post and lintel structure called a toli, which li literally means where the bird perch um, that mark the transition to a sacred realm. Whenever you see that, you know, you step further, you enter the realm of God, the realm of a spirit uh, that is sacred. This, this is the, the demarcation between the uh, profane and, and the sacred space. So totally um, the archway, the wooden post and lintel archway is a marker um, of sacred site and used uh, in Shintoism, um, you know, predominantly. <clears throat> Shinto is also integrated with the cult of imperial family um, around 300 CE. The present Japanese emperor is still believed to be a direct descendant of the original imperial family. And the imperial family traced their descendants um, from the sun goddess, sun goddess known as Amatelas. Um, and that sun goddess, um, you know, give birth to the first Japanese emperor and uh, then the lineage um, extended, you know, has extended unbroken to modern age. Uh, so there's no dynastic change. Unlike Chinese history, where there are numerous dynasties, change of dynasties. In Japan, there's no change of dynasties. It's all just the one dynasty because the imperial lin lineage never change. Um, there are just a change of administration, right? It could be a prime minister. It could, but could be um, a warrior a shogun, um, and today it is still the prime minister, but then there is still an emperor, a, Japan, a Jap Japanese emperor. So the imperial lineage uh, kind of unifies Japanese culture, uh, but not always politically. And there are great um, tombs that were believed to be the tomb for those early Japanese emperors. Um, they are known as a shogun, uh, they are known as a kofun, uh, the kofun, old tomb, um, quite monumental in scale. But those are prehistoric because when these great kofun, old tomb were constructed, there was still uh, no written record. And Ise Shrine, which is the supreme Shinto shrine dedicated to the sun goddess Amatelas, it is also identified with the imperial clan became the most prestigious Shinto shrine, um, the located at Ise, uh, dedicated to sun goddess Amatelas. Right. So that building, that design represent a prehistoric architectural prototype, but nonetheless um, kind of maintained and continued to modern age. So that testifies the continuity of Japanese history. How did they maintain a prehistoric design to, um, to the modern world? Well, they did that through the alternation of two sides. So Ise Shuan, there's an um, inner shrine, there's a outer shrine, inner shrine called Naiku, outer shrine called Geku. Um, the inner shrine is the most uh, important because that is dedicated to the sun goddess, the ancestor of the uh, imperial family. The outer shrine was dedicated to the goddess of agriculture. Um, 
And um, the shrine, the design was maintained for more, more than a thousand year because they system, systematically reconstruct the building, right? Each time they would make a copy on the empty site of exactly the same building on the old site. And then only after the copy was completed, the old one was destroyed. And that reconstruction happened every 20 year. So um, every 20 year, they will rebuild the shrine and the reconstruction guaranteed that the design um, is preserved even though the physical material was not preserved. So this is a very interesting idea in historical preservation. In this case, it is the design that worth being maintained and last forever, not the physical wood uh, for the construction of the building. Uh, for example, the last renew uh, reconstruction was in 2013, and then the next one will take place in 2033. This is a photo taken in the reconstruction in 1993, when the old building constructed in 1973 was still standing, and the new building in 1993 was just constructed. So you see exactly same building, but the old one, the new one is quite clear. And, uh, you know, shortly after this photo is taken, that one is destroyed. And that land became empty. And then in 2013, that site was constructed and this site became empty. So now if you go to Ise, um, that, that site was occupied um, with the 2013 construction and this site is empty. And then in 2033, this building is going to be reconstructed again. So it's this kind of a, a maintenance, right? So constructing, reconstructing while making exact copy of the older one. And uh, this such a process would maintain the original design even though the material, the physical material um, has never been older than 20 years. Um, the building is simplistic, just like we might imagine for a Neolithic building. It's constructed in the most simplistic material, just wood and thatch, right? Just wood, uh, no nail, no, no decoration, just a thatch, thatched roof, no tile, no metal. So just the pure um, structure. The central building shelters the imperial treasure called the three treasures. Um, and um, they are a bronze mirror, a bronze sword, and the um, some precious stone known as Magatama jewels. Um, and all of them associated with the uh, imperial rulership and all of them were probably introduced from the continent, from China and Korea, somewhere around 300 BCE, right? Uh, the bronze mirror, bronze sword, Magatama jewel, uh, which was still a weird by uh, still worn by the um, uh, kings of Korea um, as late as the uh, early 20th century. So <clears throat> um, that's the building where the treasures are being kept. The building is elevated from the ground and located on the ground. 
is a heart pillar, and that heart pillar um, is about five foot long. It's not structural. It is also hidden from public view. It has no structural function. It is actually sheltered in a small hut. And, but that is believed to be the location of the spirit. And during the reconstruction process, the first step is to relocate that heart pillar to the new site and construct the new building on top of it. And without the heart pillar, the old building is nothing but a skin to be copied and can be destroyed. And the new building uh, became the new house for uh, the sun goddess Amatelas. Um, <clears throat> The form of the shrine derived from a rice granary. It's elevated um, on a platform. So the rice granary like that from the Neolithic age um, would preserve the rice from the um, dampness um, of the ground. So it's probably derived from a utilitarian structure. But since, remember, rice cultivation, bronze technology, and the idea of rulership, they all arrived in Japan from about 300 BCE from the continent. So they appear to the original Japanese population as divine and their form of architecture and those um, mirror and sword uh, became the symbol of rulership and steel. Uh, maintained that sacred status. So um, I think the uh, Ise Shuan and its treasures and the architectural form most eloquently summarize the pattern of Japanese history and its uh, kind of exchange with the neighboring cultures and the origin of their, um, the, you know, some of the key concept in um, the uh, in, in imperial Japan. Um, the joint were made using mortise and tenon joint. Um, and these, some of the early, um, you know, building technology uh, were preserved um, in their um, architectural form. For example, um, in Neolithic Japanese architecture, as well as some of the vernacular house um, today, um, a lot of those joints were made by simply crossing two wooden members and tie them using rope. And in that case, the um, the unload bearing end of the, of the timber uh, protrude above the roof. So now the building is constructed in mortise and tenon and that protrusion has no structural function anymore, but uh, the survived in the form of architectural decoration. And today that crossing known as chiji that called the Chiki, um, became a symbol of Shinto, Shintoism in, in Japan, right? Um, it came from original structural element when those members were um, combined with rope binding, but survived as architectural decoration. The building was also constructed without a foundation. The whole structure is floating on the ground and the ground is prepared with white pebbles. Um, the, the land is purified with those um, white pebbles. So the, the weight of the roof is significant. Um, katsuogi or those wooden log to add weight to the roof to stabilize the structure. Um, also became a decoration, but it's also kind of a um, structurally necessary because 
the columns are not inserted in the into the ground. They are just floating on top of the ground. So the weight of the roof is significant for the stability of the building. Um, all right, I think I'm going to I'm going to stop here, uh, and we will we will pick up uh, next time.